Hello and welcome to another FSX video with Flight Level 180. Uh, this is somewhat of a redo. We, uh, I got some. I did a very long video on the Phenom 100 from Feel there, giving you the entire walkthrough of the official introduction flight. Uh, I had a couple advanced simmers ask me for a quicker walkthrough that, uh, that basically just goes through the meat of doing the flight. So that is what you're going to get here. You're going to get a much, uh, uh, much quicker version to the flight. This is the official introduction flight for the Field Air Phenom 100, and this is out of the manual that comes with the document. If anything in here is confusing to you or you need more detail, you can go to my other video. I'm going to leave a link in the description that's going to... Uh, Basically, that vague gives you massive depth on everything you need to know to do this flight. So here's the airplane. Let's jump into it and get it rolling. So I'm going to try to do this very quickly. So I apologize in advance uh, if it's too fast for you. And if that's the case, switch to the other video. So I'm going to turn on the batteries and the GPU. And then we can jump right into starting the engine. So I'm using my center mouse button to scroll that over and hold it until it pops back. And it's starting. Now, uh, there's some things we can configure on the airplane right now. There's some things we can't because the PFDs aren't up. But we can set our flight level, uh, our cruising altitude. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm holding down control and scrolling up to 320. And then we can load our flight plan. So we go to Flights, Flight Planner. And I'll leave the notes in the description of where you get the flight plan. So go ahead and do that. So I'm loading the flight plan. And there we go. And we're going to hit OK. Do we want to move our, air, our airplane? No. And then you can pop here, hit flight plan. There's our flight plan. So we're in good shape there. Looks like our engine is spooling up nicely. Let's go ahead and configure some lights. Taxi light on, nav light on, strobe light on. Let's go ahead and set our pitch trim, which is here. You need to get that to 65 using the handy dandy buttons on your joystick. Okay, we have a good engine start. Let's go ahead and start engine one. Let's see, we should get some action. We do. Good. Uh, we have a good start sequence. Let's go ahead and configure our flaps, which is F7. Okay, and we are going to fly the, if you look at the flight plan, we're actually not flying directly That is not the correct flight plan. Let's, let's load the correct one. Flight planner, load this one. That would have been interesting. Okay, that's the correct flight plan. So instead of flying directly to John, the John intersection, we're actually gonna fly, fly the John 1 SID. And what that entails is flying the 351 degree radial, flying, uh, flying a heading of 250, to intercept the 351 degree radial out of the Phoenix VOR. So we need to set the Phoenix VOR on nav one. So let's go ahead and do that. That's 115.6. And let's make that active. And there it is, Phoenix VOR. Let's go ahead and set our, our course, uh, which is gonna be 321. Two, three. There we go. Course is 321, we're on nav there. And that is basically all we can do right now. So let's go ahead and just for the sake of expediency, let's get our taxi going. Hitting shift P to go ahead and get the pushback going. Engines both started correctly. We're looking good there. Now, since we're gonna fly a, we can't set our heading yet because we have no heading available. So that's okay. So we're pushing back nicely. No airplanes around. So let's go ahead and jump in. Shift P to turn that off. And this airplane does need a bit of, of throttle, of thrust to actually get it rolling. So I'm gonna pop up to around 45, get things rolling, then I'll slow down a little bit. And off we go. So this flight, this is the official flight, as I said, from field air. Uh, it's about 10 pages in the document, maybe eight pages. It gives a, a lot of detail. Uh, I strongly recommend that you read through that document or watch my other video. It will teach you a lot about uh, about flying this particular air aircraft. And if you aren't already an advanced simmer, uh, 
how to do uh, instrument flights. Uh, this airplane is not super automated. I think this version of the Phenom is pretty dumbed down from what the real version is, but it is a, you know, it's a good intermediate aircraft, I would say, maybe slightly below intermediate. So, okay, we have some instruments. So let's go ahead and set our heading. So that's going to be 250. So let's do that. Looks like our speed's really building up there. Two five zero. And let's slow things down a little bit. Let's check our if we're configured for takeoff. Okay. okay, I hope you can hear that well. It says takeoff okay, the typical Embraer takeoff config button. Gives a nice touch. The Carinado version does not have that along with a number of other things. Let's check to make sure nothing on final. Nothing out there. Let's go ahead and roll out onto the runway. So we're going to turn on our landing lights. We're going to bring up the timer. I'm not going to go ahead and set V speeds. You would set V speeds right here. Our rotation speed is 92 knots at our current weight. We're just going to go ahead and go. So what you do is you hit Shift 1 to bring up the 2D panel. You spin up to about 40, 50% and 1. Everything is in the green. You click the Togo hotspot, which is right there, and then you go full power. And let's go ahead and turn this off. Now what we're going to do is we're going to rotate at 92 knots. We're going to pitch up for around 127 knots, uh, climb to 500 feet, start configuring the autopilot, activate the autopilot around 1,000 feet. There we go. There's a rotation. We need a flight director, so let's go ahead and get that on. There we go, and we have positive rates. Let's go gear up. There we go. Need to get a little more, a little more angle of attack to get our gear up. There we go. 500 feet. We're gonna click heading. Get ready for that. We're gonna go into autopilot mode, and now we're too far pitched. That's about right. Uh, we're at a thousand feet. Let's go ahead and turn on the autopilot. Autopilot on flight level control on. Let's go ahead and start turning left. So we are going to go left to 250 and that is correct. It is doing the, the correct behavior and I forgot to start that so let's start that. Boom. So add 30 seconds to our flight time and we're 133 knots on the speed so let's go ahead and get that up to 160. FLC will pitch the airplane for correct uh, rate of climb to get us to 160 knots. Once we hit around 160, we're going to raise our flaps and we'll just go ahead and go all the way up to 180. Go ahead and raise the flaps. And speed is looking good. Let's go ahead and go up to 180. 180. Good. Our heading is 250. That is correct. Let's go ahead and turn on the uh, TCAS. So you go to transponder mode, T-A-R-A, -A, and hit back, back, traffic. And there's our traffic, and then we can zoom out to a uh, little more range. And then we're gonna hit system, I'm sorry, back, map, traffic. There we go, and we have no traffic. There's a little bit of traffic, but not much. Okay. We're at zero. Now let's go ahead and get ready to intercept the radio. So just to give you the visual of what the John 1 SID consists of, this is the Phoenix VOR. This is the John intersection. When we hit this radio, which is 320 degrees off the Phoenix VOR, we're going to make a right turn and intercept that intersection right there. So let's go ahead and get that configured. We're on nav one, we have 320 degree radial. We have the Phoenix VOR, it looks good. So we can go ahead and hit nav. And you notice here, we're now still in heading mode, but we are in VOR acquisition mode. So when we start approaching this and the line starts moving in, we're gonna make a right turn and capture that 321 degree radial. Looks like we have some close traffic here and it's significantly below us, so it's no concern. We're climbing over it. 
yeah, you really you really need both. You really need this to see the relative altitude, and you need this to be able to see where it is because it's a little confusing off of this. Okay, let's go ahead and speed things up. This the intent of this video is to get things through through things fast so you can learn the basics of the airplane. And there we go, airplane is starting to turn right to capture that VOR. Looking good. Okay, let's go ahead and go to normal speed for a few seconds. Now, uh, so once we are settled down on that 321 degree radial, we're at 317, 318, 19 what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set our heading to the current heading so you center click with that with the mouse wheel you hit heading let's go a couple clicks to the right just to make sure we hit that hit this intersection right over here and then we're gonna switch to GPS mode and then we're gonna hit nav again and you're gonna see we're still in heading mode, but we're in GPS acquisition mode. So this will turn pink and heading will disappear when we intersect this, uh, this line here. Now, you, I'm sure you've noticed that our screen is freezing a bit here. I think this is a bug with the Field Air product. Uh, I haven't seen this much, really haven't seen it at all in other FSX products, but this screen freezes like crazy and it's uh, maddening. You need to zoom in and zoom out to get it to actually work. Really, really annoying detail. Okay, let's do our checks. We have flaps up, we have gear up, all good there. We have our, let's turn off our landing lights. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna bother with the passenger signs for this flight. I'm gonna leave full power on, uh, try to move quickly here. And let's close that up, traffic is up, we're approaching uh, we're approaching the flight levels, so let's go ahead and speed up our simulation rate. When we hit 18,000, we're going to turn on our windshield heating. And since we, uh, since we already have standard barometer, we're good there. We don't need to do anything with that because we are flying at, uh, at standard uh, barometer pressures all the way through. So there we go, and you can see there we've already hit the uh, we've already hit the GPS course, and we're now on our GPS heading. And you notice here it says GPS. Let's go ahead now that we're at flight level 180. Let's pop up to 200 knots. Uh, take note: this airplane is uh, it's pretty fast when you get up to altitude. We can cruise at 380 knots, but it is not a stellar climber. Um, it's, it really doesn't climb much above, uh, well, you'll see once we actually stabilize here at 200 knots, uh, it really is not exactly a, a big climber. It's not really representative here, but uh, you know, we should get 14, 1300 knots as we get up to flight level 320. Uh, now I compare my other video to the, to the TVM. The TVM climbs much more rapidly this one cruises faster. So anyway, it's, it's interesting. I've, if you fly this flight, the TVM versus the, versus the Phenom, the, uh, you get there almost exactly the same speed. Like this airplane is just almost the same, uh, almost the same time on this flight, which is almost an hour long. So when we get to 0.55, we're going to click center click the speed there we go, and that changes it to speed hold, uh, mock hold mode. And we're approaching 320. Let's go ahead and get our speed up to 0.64, which is basically max cruise speed. And then we're going to hit the CSC button, which you see that activates there, which is essentially a poor man's auto throttle. It uh, it gives you it gives you basically a fixed mock number at cruise settings. Uh, which adjusts for the weight of the airplane and such forth. So, but there's no auto throttle on this airplane, uh, even though the Carinado version has it. Uh, this this plane is a better representation because there's you know there's FLC mode where it pitches for the correct speed in the ascent, 
and then in the when you're cruise altitude you get the CSC mode but when you're descending there's no auto throttle at all we have to control things manually so let's go ahead and look at our flight plan so the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out our descent and we need to be a caddy on the standard arrival into uh, into Las Vegas we need to be a caddy at 12,000 feet so let's go ahead and set up our altitude so we're going to spool this down to 12,000 and let's figure out how far out we need to descend basically what you do is you take and you say well we're descending 20,000 feet you move the thousands to 20 you multiply by 3 to 60 and then you add about 10 percent now I like to and then then so we're going to basically descend 70 nautical miles from caddy so 25 35 38 38 plus 32 so 32 nautical miles from IGM is where we start our descent so let's mark this to keep that spot there and we're pretty close to that we're not going to be spending much time in altitude and so 32 nautical miles and I'll tell you how to calculate our descent rate as we go down uh, now we are expecting uh, runway 25 left when we get to when we get to uh, when we get to Las Vegas. So we could go ahead while well, we have a couple minutes here and configure the uh, configure the ILS radios for that. So the frequency for Las Vegas ILS 25 left is 111.75. Let's set that. That is here, 111.75, click, and as you can tell we're out of range, let's click that so we get an audio cue and we actually come into range of the radio. Uh, oops, we have already blown past our point, this is the problem with going so fast, let's go ahead and start our descent, we're going to have to go down a little faster because of that, so vertical speed is on vertical speed is on there we go and let's go down at 2200 feet per minute and the goal is really to descend at 250 knots so try not to overspeed here there we go this airplane when it reaches when it levels off, is if it levels off very slowly. Uh, so it's, uh, you basically have to be aggressive in how fast you descend. So the typical speed you want to descend at is you take your ground speed, which is 382 knots, you round up to the nearest 20, which is three, 400 knots, you divide that by two to 200 knots and then you add a zero to go to 2000 and that's your feet per minute that you want to descend at. Since we're a little bit behind the curve we're going to descend at 2200 feet per minute. But basically that's what you're going to do and as we drop to 380 then you go to 1900 feet per minute. And it works very well. It's You got to be aggressive on this plane because you'll see when, once we get down to uh, once we get down to caddy you'll see it is very slow in, in descending so now if you look out there this is pretty much where we're headed right there that's Las Vegas area right there that green splotch this is the Colorado River going south to the Gulf of Mexico and I believe it's the Gulf the Gulf of California pardon me there is the Grand Canyon uh, it looks pretty dry up here I don't know if this area is really that dry but when you get towards Vegas it's pretty dry Okay, uh, let's go ahead and set our course for when we get to the ILS. So the course of the, the, the bearing of the runway of 25 left is 255 degrees, so let's go ahead and set that. We have a second, so we're going to set our heading bug to center it. We're going to hit heading. We're going to switch our CDI to VOR1. We're going to move this to three, uh, 255 degrees. There we go, and then we're going to switch back into GPS mode, and then we're going to click on nav and make sure we're still on the GPS, and we are still good here. Okay, let's do the math here. So 
we are we're going a little fast so let's bring that down a touch um, still a little fast so we need to get down 14,000 feet so 14 28 uh, 38 42 so about 45 nautical miles out and we are 40 nautical miles out so we need to keep hammering down we really need to get down fast it's okay it's uh, not a huge deal you just need to be cognizant of that issue and just get down faster so we get down there by the heading by the restriction so at caddy we are going to be told to turn to 325 degrees so let's change our heading to 325 so there we go so we're ready to go on that we're just going to hit the heading button to do that and there we go now if you look at what's out there i set a very very thick cloud base uh, over las vegas airport so we're going to come down to minimums and then we're going to not see we're not really see the airport until we hit minimums which should be fun uh, given that we've got to be pretty cautious as to how we approach because this airplane doesn't have auto throttles you can be uh you really need to be stable a long ways in advance to make sure your speeds are correct so we need to be cautious with that let's go ahead and set our v speeds i didn't do it on takeoff just out of uh, sheer interest in getting things done quickly but let's set them here vfs is 119 knots and let's turn that on and VAC is 105 knots. VREF is 95 knots. And our approach speed is 110 knots. And let's go ahead and set our minimums. Minimums are on, and we're gonna go to radar altimeter and set it for 200 feet. And we should be good there. So we are how far from Caddy? We are 26 nautical miles. We have 8,000 feet to go, 8, 16, 24, 26. We're pretty close to right on. So let's just keep it going at this, uh, at this speed. Maybe we could bring it down to 2,000. I really don't want to be too aggressive in bringing down the speed because otherwise we're not going to make it by uh, 12,000. So let's go ahead and do one more thing. Um, this is a nice trick, and some of you probably don't know this. A great way to get lined up to the ILS is to use a VOR at the airport to get lined up. So we're going to set our NAV2 radio to the VOR, the high altitude VOR, at, at KLAS. So we're going to go to 116.9. We're going to activate that. And there we go. It's, we're, it's in range already. So if we go to uh, PFD and hit bearing two, you can now see this blue line indicates the bearing to the Las Vegas VOR. Now when we activate, go into nav mode, and we have the bearing, which is 255 degrees for the runway, when we get that lined up perfectly with this, that means we're on the correct bearing to to hit the ILS and we're basically lined up directly with the uh, with our uh, let's see how we're doing here 17 nautical miles uh, we're gonna be pretty hard pretty stressed to hit this let's go down faster and let's bring our speed back a little bit so you will see that in action it's a really nice trick uh, to get lined up to the ILS and typically you do it with the outer markers and using uh, NDBs and such forth, but in this airport there's uh, FS doesn't, FSX doesn't have any uh, outer markers as far as I can tell, but there is a VOR at the airport, so it works just as well. And we can also use this for a DME, so we're 56 nautical miles from the airport. 
Okay, 15,700. We are 13 nautical miles. It looks like we're just barely going to make it. Okay, and once we hit Caddy, we're going to go to this heading of 325 degrees. And then from there, we're going to go direct to Prino. Actually, almost pointed straight at the airport. It's really in dense, dense cloud cover, isn't it? It's going to be completely, complete IMC. 14.5, 10 nautical miles to go. Probably speed things up, but that's okay. We'll just, uh, we'll stay with this. Speed is okay. Sorry if this is too fast for some of you. I know I'm going very quickly, but uh, I think it gives you the general idea of how to fly the flight. And if you're, you know what you're doing, shouldn't be a problem to follow along with what I'm doing. Just, you know, just keep an eye on the different systems that I'm using. Uh, so we are now, we don't need to worry about our barometer because it's 2992. Let's go ahead and get our landing lights on. Uh, there's no auto, uh, there's no uh, speed of brakes that automatically deploy or any speed brakes at all, so we can't do anything with that. Six nautical miles, you can see, now watch how it really slows down as it's getting close. So that's why we need to be pretty far out when we actually, uh, we need to be down pretty fast, because look at this, it's really slow. Let's keep our speed up. A little too much. Yeah, look at that, 500 feet per minute. <laughs> 200 feet to go. And this is frozen again. Feel there, if you guys see this video, fix this feature. It's really uh, annoying. Needs to be fixed. Okay, and we have passed Caddy. So let's go ahead and go into heading mode. And that will turn us right to 350 degrees. We're now done with the GPS. So let's go ahead and go back, hit CDI. And we now are in nav radio mode. And we still don't have the ILS in range. So now, according to the directions, it says we need to go direct to Prino. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to hit D. We're going to slide that once and type in P R I N O and we're going to enter three times two three boom and then we're going to need to look at the map to see what that looks like so we need to be left about 15 10 15 degrees so let's do that let's go 10 1 2 3 4 5 uh, 307 degrees is what they say, or 310. Let's go three more degrees. Okay, and basically Prino is pretty much where you need to be turning left and going straight down into the ILS. So it's a nice, uh, it's a nice fix to actually get onto the ILS. And we need to get our altitude down to 8,000 feet. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to V-speed down. Let's go down to 1,200. I've been flying the uh, the feel there uh, the feel there uh, ERJs lately, and uh, especially the 175 and 195. And it's just uh, feels like so much work to uh, have to mess with the throttle so much and be worrying about V-speed. It just makes it's like so easy to fly those airplanes with their uh, with the flight data computers. Uh, it's pretty pretty amazing stuff. I, I recommend you watch those videos. It's pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Okay, speed is a little high. Let's bring it down a little bit. Are we IMC yet? We are fully IMC. So we're gonna keep our heads down on the instruments. Let's see what it looks like from outside, nothing. Okay. Okay, getting down to 10,000, 16 nautical miles to Prino. We're going to be at Prino in three minutes, and we have 2,500 to go. I think that's probably about right. Again, you just want to be aggressive on this airplane to get down. 
Now when I turn on to the final approach course, I'm gonna to try to get, just because there's so much horrible weather, I really wanna to try to get my speed down and get into my landing configuration pretty far out. So I'm gonna be trying to target my approach speed about 10 nautical miles out and be going from there down into my landing speed and pretty, it's getting down to pretty close to VRF pretty early. So that's because this airplane, uh, it does not handle, it, it acquires the, it acquires the ILS, the, the, the localizer and the glide path very well, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't stay on it when you're flipping around with the flaps and adding gear and such forth. It, uh, it tends to wander a bit. So uh, we're going to be very cautious of that because if we start wandering in this horrible IMC that basically gets us down to minimums, we could be in big trouble fast. So let's see, we have two minutes to go to Prino. We are not in range of the, of the, via, of the localizer yet. Uh, we are 28. We should see that in any second. You're going to hear the Morse code come up. I see we picked up some rain and some turbulence here. Pretty nasty weather. Okay, and look at that. We just picked up the horizontal component of the localizer. Uh, it's directly ahead of us. Now you notice, and there's the Morse. So you notice that this line is coming down towards this bearing. And when it's lined up perfectly, that's when this line is going to be here. So basically all three lines are going to be good. So we have a pretty good sense that we're getting very close to that localizer. So let's see, we are very close to Prino. Let's go ahead and slide left a little bit. Just so we go right over it. Looking good, about 212 knots, that's good. One minute to Prino, and we are almost to the localizer. Still no vertical component. That should pick up when we start uh, making our left turn. One thing I love about the field airs is they do a really nice job of acquiring the localizer. Uh, the Carinados just are, uh, are a mess. It's uh, You can get into, uh, if you hit it and you're, you've got any sort of vertical or vertical speed going, then it will frequently just not even grab the localizer. So you really uh, need to be very, very conservative getting it here. But we could hit the approach button right now and it would pick it up without an issue. We're going to wait a little bit, but that's okay. So we're at 8,000 feet. Let's go down to about 7,500 once we hit Prino. And we are almost there. speed about there. There comes the localizer. Let's go ahead and hit APR. Notice where localizer is armed and let's see if the airplane catches it. Looks like it's going to. Let's go ahead and B speed down. 7,000 and make sure we stay underneath. up. Oh, there's the glide slope. I think we're good. So let's go ahead and hit the Alt key which will cause us to maintain the current altitude and the glide slope should start coming down and if the airplane does its job, it will grab it. Let's go ahead and get a notch of flaps. We're 20 nautical miles out. I really like to start getting the speed down a little bit. Two notches of flaps. Let's get our gear down. And we're gonna have to get a lot more uh, throttle, a lot more uh, feel. There's the glide slope being acquired. You notice here that we've got the perfectly aligned as I told you that lines beautifully. Let's go ahead and turn off the bearing two. We don't need that. Let's set our heading to runway heading just in case we need to go around and there we go. Actually we do need bearing two because we're gonna need that DME. Okay there we go. Let's just turn on the DME. We don't need the heading. So Bearing two will turn you off. Uh, looking good. 145 knots. Let's go ahead and keep that. Let's keep that for till we get to about 15 nautical miles. Okay. Let's check everything. We have our gear down. We have three green. We have flaps two. 
want taxi lights on or landing lights on. Uh, let's turn on. Let's turn this on just in case. And since we can't see that, we're going to go Shift Three. Uh, there might be icing in these clouds because it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty dark. I see something, some ground there, but we certainly do not see the runway. Okay, we're 143 knots, 16 nautical miles out. Let's let's hold the speed until we get to about 10 nautical miles, and I want to come down to our uh, our approach speed. And this is frozen again, as always. Look good. 14 nautical miles. TCAS is clear. Let's zoom that in a little bit. Might as well be close. Let's go ahead and speed it up for a few seconds. Looks like we're getting some pretty serious turbulence here. That's probably enough. Normal speed, 11 nautical miles. Still can't see the runway. Pretty heavy, uh, pretty heavy clouds. Okay, 11 nautical miles. nautical miles. Let's go ahead and start bringing that speed down. Let's go down to about 120. get our third notch. Okay, we're at our altimeter, just started picking up. Okay, we're going to land with three notches here. Seven nautical miles. Six. get a little bit below the glide slope, so hopefully the airplane adjusts for that. So let's look at our setup here with three flaps, three greens on the gear, landing lights are on. Turn off the Autopilot, we're going to turn off the yaw damper. There we go, we can see the runway. It's probably going to be a momentary glimpse, I would bet. There we go. Runway's in sight, we have two red, two white. We're looking pretty good. Let's hope we don't go into a squall. Oh, looks like we went into a squall. Pretty serious turbulence, too. Eight 
800 feet over. I'm going to keep my speed up. Looking good. We are uh, right on the localizer. Typically, I'd be uh, have the autopilot off, but given uh, given uh, how we're completely blind, let's keep it on. We're pretty good right here. I like the speed. Three hundred feet. There we go. There's a runway. Let's turn off the yaw damper. Autopilot's off. Let's go zero power. And wow, oh, that's beautiful. Okay. That's the way it's done. You really want to make sure you have that yacht amper off. There is just zero rudder authority at all when uh, you leave it on on this airplane. No uh, reverse thrust, no no uh, no speed brakes, anything like that. This airplane is uh, you got to use the standard brakes, but the landing distance is amazing. It's pretty impressive. So that's it. Uh, I hope that was illustrative. I hope that. Uh, it's fast enough for you. We probably can go ahead and stop the clock here in a second. Didn't even make it to the high-speed taxiways. Uh, we got through that so fast. Let's go up this guy. Going the other directions, high-speed taxiways. And that's it. Let's see how long that took us. Back reference 50 minutes so that's pretty good so a TBM uh, pretty close to max speed 850 is about 55 minutes so this max speed burning probably three times as much full fuel as uh, 50 minutes so anyway I hope you enjoyed that and let me know if you want to see anything else thank you very much